Today's guest, uh, I'm grateful to finally have her in studio. Um, she is from Atlanta, but has been living in Indiana for quite some time. Uh, we'll hear more about it. Uh, she is the creator and star of the Miss Pat Show, which is currently on BET Plus and Paramount Plus. She also has her new special on Netflix. You can check it out. It's called Y'all Want to Hear Something Crazy. Uh, she's my new friend, and she brought some beautiful ladies with her. I'll say that. Some real lookers. Um, the hilarious Miss Pat. Um, so you're moving back to Atlanta. Are you excited? Or are you? Um, I just moved back. I, I am okay. excited. Um, I shoot the show there. I shoot the Miss Pat show there, and I shot my special there. I'm from Atlanta, so my husband just retired, and I was like, "Look, I'm ready to get the fuck out of Indiana. Let's go home." Yeah. So I bought some. I bought some land, and I'm building on it. Dang. What y'all gonna have? Like anything special at the house? Like anything you always wanted? Um, I wanted a podcast studio because right now I was doing it. I was doing it a little bit everywhere. I do it on Zoom, and then when I was in India, I would do it out of my movie theater room. Mm -hmm. So I really want to get big time like you mm -hmm. and everybody else. So I built a podcast studio um, outside the house. Oh, nice! Yeah, and y'all gonna have what else? A pool. A pool, a basketball court. You oh, know, nice. It's going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> you got any fancy neighbors? Like, is it in a fancy place? No, it's not in a fancy place. 12 people. Every, the youngest person might be 65. At y'all's house? At my oh, neighborhood. Oh, your neighborhood. Mm hmm Little small oh, neighborhood. Wow. And it had some a couple acreage, and I just bought it. Dang. I knew I wanted a big house, but I didn't want a big mortgage. Yeah. So I just found some land, and I sold the house down, and I'm going to get with it. Damn. And who's going to live at the house with you? Your husband? You? Um, I have four kids that I have custody of, my niece kids. And then I have a 21, well, 22 and a 23-year-old. Damn. They have three grandkids uh, and my son. They, they live nearby. Yeah, your life's crazy. I felt like even just a half hour of your, your special, I felt like I watched it. Like, it reminded me of The Wire. <laughs> Remember that show? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, that was, I, it took a long time for me to get into the wire. Me too. My husband is a Christian. I mean, he grew up Christian, so, and I grew up, you know, of course, selling drugs. You know my background. And he was kept raving about, you got to watch this show. I, I don't want to watch that bullshit. I live that shit. <laughs> and one day I sat down and I watched the wire. I was like, oh my God, this shit is so fucking real. Yeah, they did a good job. They did a good fucking job. But I think I got into it like in the fourth season. Yeah, oh, yeah. Real late. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't get into it. I don't think until like one year ago. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. That's 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 one of the best underrated shows that was out there, and it was so fucking real. Yeah, it I was could really, really good. relate. You know what show I really miss was In the Heat of the Night. Do you remember that show? I do remember In the Heat of the Night. Remember that show? Yeah, it was good, huh? You, you telling your age, Theo? No worries. What I'm showing my age, you mean? Yeah. So oh yeah, sorry. Heat. That's Everybody... why they need to do a remake so I can sound really like I know what. Like I just miss, I, dude. I saw the lady from In the Heat of the Night one time eating breakfast with her husband. I lost my mind. Do you remember the detective, his wife? Not quite. You know who I remember from The Heat of the Night is the uh, the black dude and then the officer, the, the other one. The oh white yeah, dude. Carol O'Connor. Yeah, Carol O'Connor. The played. the black guy Virgil Tibbs. That was his name. His wife was Althea. And I saw her at the breakfast place, and I really lost it. Oh, wow. I've never heard nobody say they was crazy about the heat of the night. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I really loved My it. My shit was Dukes of Hazzard back in that era. Really? I had You a, like them country boys? Well, I'm from the South, and, you know, uh, everybody was going crazy over Daisy Duke, and, you know, because I was really young. And um, the boys were going crazy over uh, uh, Bo Duke is who I thought was fucking drop gorgeous. Damn. Oh, I had the biggest crush on Bo Duke. Let's pull him up, Colin. Can we get Bo Duke up there? <laughs> Back in the day. And he, one of them is a uh, homosexual man, I think, isn't he? What? One of them loved men, yeah. Or preferred men. Where you get but that they shit didn't from? Say it. Oh, I think everybody knows it, I think. Let the me one see. with the black hair? 
I think you might have been. <laughs> Don't tell me about baby daddy. I know. I think you might have been <laughs> lusting after that man, man. Bo, Damn, that's yeah. Bo right there, the one with the blonde hair. Yeah. What about the picture with that hat with just the no shirt on? Oh, everybody loved Bo Duke back in the day. Yeah, he was good, huh? Yeah. I think they down in Georgia, aren't they? Mm, I don't know. Bo Duke. I don't know. One of them, I think, preferred men. I could be wrong, but I don't well, know. So no tell me. So your husband, I heard you met him and he was in the military and then... uh. And and now he's done. He's retired. He retired. He um he um what was he six seven years in the military or something yeah. like that. And when I met him, he had just got out, so he was really young. And um he worked for General Motors. He makes the Allison transmission for the military division. Oh wow! And so he retired about two two three months ago. Dang! In December he retired. Is it weird? Because some people say when people get retired, then it gets weird around the house because somebody's around more. But like. I'm never around, so oh. I'm like literally. I do I do morning radio at V103 in Atlanta, and then I I leave there and I go to set. And if I'm not doing set, I'm I'm fucking traveling. But it's a little weird having him home doing a day. I think he's bored out of his mind. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you want to do? I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm like, you want to come see me tape the show because it's in front of a live studio audience. Mm -hmm. I'm cool. I'm cool. So I just I think he's just got a jest because my husband's so used to being head of the household, and he's been working. Our whole fucking marriage yeah. since I've known him, and this is first time not having a job. Yeah. So I think he's kind of adjust to the shit. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get a wife or something one day. I um, yeah, I only ever been with one black woman in my life, and uh, she had well, like you know it's legal. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody stopping you, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> that mullet you rocking might be stopping you. <laughs> you think yeah, this is a stop sign, huh, for black women? Well, you think? It, it don't say it don't say you like us. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> that haircut do not say you like sisters. Damn, I got then maybe I need to put on something else, some bead I've work or something. I've never seen a black woman fuck a white dude with a mullet. Oh, we about to change the game, yeah. then. That's well, what you I'm need saying. to cut that motherfucking mullet off. Oh, I don't know, baby. This it, is really my firepowers in there. Well, you need you to know? explain to the black woman. This is my firepower. <laughs> okay. It ain't what you thinking. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not like a racist emblem. It's just my, I just feel more confident with it. Well, you don't have on a Confederate flag, but it's just, no. it's the haircut. It you is, know? huh? It, black women are very particular about what they men look like. Yeah. You, know? you never, that's why you never, uh, that's why you never really see black men with dirty shoes. Yeah. Unless they just ain't got no money. Right. But if you fly, you you gonna always see black men with clean shoes on. Yeah, black people always smell real exciting. <laughs> and, uh, exciting, that damn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, you know <laughs> if a fucking... So you'll meet a brother, he smell like a damn bath and body works. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes black people, I feel like they a lot of times they just are more... Yeah. Flashy. Flashy, yeah. We, we, you know, like... Why um, is it? Why is it? Um... Uh, is it just because we make everything look good? Yeah. I mean, if you want to sell something, let's be honest. Who you take it to? You take it to the African American. Uh, you take it to the black people because we make everything flash. Like, how are you doing that wrong? Yeah. I mean, think about it. How many white athletes got a shoe? Mm. Uh, your boy um, Tom Brady had some Uggs. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and then, uh, old boy Larry Bird had the Converse, and it's only because of him and um. Magic had that thing going on back in the yeah. day. You, it's, it's really hard. You you gotta. I don't think black people buy a white shoe. That's a good point, huh? Yeah, because you know we we you want something to sell, you take it off. Damn, huh? Yeah, we we, we walk in advertisement all the time. We turn anything hot and fresh. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I think I uh, people always look to the black community for like what's cool, huh? Well, we're the coolest people on earth. Yeah. Nobody's cooler than us. That's why we cop it. Yeah, let me think who else could be. Maybe aliens. I heard somewhere that black people and aliens don't get along. Did you ever hear? Is that like a thing in the black culture? Do you really think aliens are fucking real? I mean, they, they got they got to have well, some of them. Well, how many how many times do you think a black person made an alien? I don't know. Do you know anything? Fuck no. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, you, I'm just, I don't know if you guys are telling, not saying something. Oh, uh, who the fuck? Yeah, I think it knows it's white people. Is. Y'all motherfuckers know if it was aliens before us, we mind our motherfucking business. <laughs> you ain't never heard no black people say, I'm just going to go to the moon and fuck with these people in the sky. <laughs> that's white people shit. That ain't all shit. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, that's probably true. Well, aliens and black people don't get along. What the fuck that's supposed to be? I don't know. That's just what I heard. That's like something I heard through the grapevine over the years. That's like an old wives' tale or something, you know? Well, let me. Well, I've heard all white men dicks is small. That ain't true, is it? No. Well, thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you hurry up and defend that. No. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh, that's wild. Um, what else is going on today? Not much, really. Just chilling, pretty much. You know. I'm trying to think of something else super that's exciting. So you got your special out. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched about 30 minutes of it last night. It was awesome. You tell so many jokes. I mean, you just bum, 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 bum. Uh, thank you. Um, R Robert Towns directed it. And um, it wasn't easy getting it together with him. Boy, he worked the shit out of me. Really? So I had to meet with him once once a week for four hours a day on Zoom and do my whole set. And he would take it and twist it. He would listen to every set I did out on the road and hit me back that Monday and say, this is what we're going to work on this Wednesday. Are you serious? Yes, I've I never heard of a director it. doing that. I haven't either. But, you know, to step to Robert Towns and say you want him to direct your special when he only did Raw for Eddie Murphy, uh, I think, I hope I said the right one for Eddie Murphy. But he did Eddie Murphy Raw and he did Bill Cosby last one. To step to say you want him to direct your special, that was huge. Wow. And he was like, no. And I was like, I, I need you. I knew I just needed him. You know, I just felt like he was a director that would care, that would sit down. This is my first special. I really wanted it to be good. Mm -hmm. And it took a minute, but he finally came through and he directed it for me. And it was not easy work. Wow. He really put you through it. He put me through it. I mean, and so I was supposed to tape it a year early, but the pandemic hit. Yeah. So he came on right after the right after the pandemic hit, I think, and he worked the dog shit out of me. Damn. I will call him again if I got another special because, you know, when you drop a special, you really worry about, you know, do people gonna think it's funny? Is it gonna flow right? I didn't watch it. I watched the cuts and put together, but I was like, I don't really want to be, you know, because I'm scared. I'm scared what people going to think about it. Yeah. And I just started to look at the feedback. And people were like, oh, my God, it's so good. It's so funny. It's just joking. It reminded me of comedy back in the day. And, you know, because I'm not, I'm not, I say what the fuck I want to say. Oh, yeah, you do for yeah. sure. More than anybody I think I've heard in a long time. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the cancel culture, um, they out there. I mean, I'm not worried about them. I'm going to say what the fuck I want to say. You digest it how the fuck you want to say it. Yeah. And um, one of the things uh, that was really, Robert really liked, the thing I did at the end, I don't know if you got to the end, my daughter is mm -hmm. gay. And um, I, t I tell all of these bits about my daughter being gay, and then I do this whole speech at the end about, you know, um, it, which... <laughs> At first, I didn't think they was going to take it. So I said, I said, no matter what you've been through in life, learn how to laugh at it. I don't give a fuck if somebody stuck their thumb up your ass. If they didn't get past the knuckle, you won. Yeah. <laughs> and Netflix was like, what the fuck? <laughs> but that's what I've been saying on stage at, at, with that hour I had for the longest. Because, I mean, I, won't, I don't give a fuck what you've been through. Yeah. You can get through it if you believe that you can get through it. The mind is a strong muscle. It take on what you put in it. Yeah. If you say I'm depressed, it gonna be it gonna be, your mind will make your whole body depressed. So I don't use words like unhappy and depressed and I can't. I tell a motherfucker it ain't there's not a such thing as you can't. There's a yes somewhere if you keep trying. Wow. Yeah, that's a good attitude. Yeah, I recently been thinking that like whatever I thought, uh, if I have a thought, it becomes a feeling. So I got to be real careful yeah. about what my thoughts are. Yeah, because if you say if you tell yourself that you're not good, your mind will make you the whole body feel like you're not. Damn. Good. And and I've just learned that I learned that actually from a teacher. Her name was Miss Troop. She said you can do and be anything in the fucking world you want to be. The dumbest question is the question not asked. And I that made me ask people any fucking thing I wanted to ask them. But it's so funny because a lot of people will hear a teacher say something like that, mm -hmm. right? And Because probably teachers say that to everybody mm -hmm. in a way. But it's, it's, a lot of times it doesn't activate in us, you know? I wonder what made it that act. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting how... This teacher spent a lot of time with me because I was I grew up in the inner city of Atlanta in in the ghetto and and she would you know like she taught me how to read and 
And, you know, she just instilled a lot of things in me that my mama didn't. Yeah. And I'm I'm 50 now, and I still quote her to this day. Wow. When I'm down and out, I said, Miss Troop said, I can do and be in the fucking thing I want to be. When I went to my husband said, I'm going to be a comedian. He was like, girl, because I'm a convicted felon. He was like, mm-hmm. just keep the fucking job at General Motors. I'm like, yeah. no. I, I want to be a comedian. This shit look easy. I'm having fun. <laughs> you get to eat because everybody start doing comedy. Well, at least I did to eat the free food and oh, the drinks yeah. and shit. Yeah, it's nice. And he's like, I get to eat it. And, and hey, you get that little attention. And my husband's like, just keep the fucking job at general. I say, no, I'm going to be a <laughs> fucking comedian. He's like, oh, no, this bitch just don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. A lot of comedians, they, because the, part of the temptation in the beginning is this shit does not feel like a real job. It and don't. It feels kind of if you have a natural acclimation and being making people laugh, you're like this shit is easy. It's easy. It's fun. You hanging out with people you like. You up all night. You get them twenty, thirty dollars, and yeah. you know them few little. If you, especially like if you ain't got no real bills, or or you or you a waiter or something, and you go to your job during the day. But it's so much fun at night. To hang around people that you really fucking like, that do what you do, and you watch everybody turn that fucking happiness into a struggle where they trying to make it or trying to make this shit work for them. So this is all they got to do because this is what they love to do. Yeah. Yeah, there is something that's kind of beautiful about it in that sense, you know? Do you think, sometimes I feel like strippers, I notice a similarity between strippers and comedians. Do you ever feel that way a little bit? Now, I don't know a goddamn thing about strippers. I'm fatter than a motherfucker. <laughs> what the fuck, man? You think I know alien strippers? What's going to be next <laughs> for you, Theo? I don't know shit about that. I don't even go to no fucking strip club. I don't even like pussy. I don't like my own pussy. So why am I going to look at other bitches with pussy? <laughs> you need to stay the fuck out of them strip clubs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them either. I'm just thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Evidently, you do. You asking me. I noticed that comedy and pussy go together. Not for me. <laughs> I don't know shit about no goddamn script. I'm fat. <laughs> Bitches built like me do videos like Lizzo. <laughs> we don't Lizzo got shot, didn't she? She's the one that got shot or no? No, you getting your black folks mixed up. That oh, was uh, Megan Thee Stallion got shot in the foot. Lizzo is the, the plus side woman oh, who be yeah. giving it to him. On the internet, well, Lizzo be throwing that thick at you, yeah, baby. Yeah, she be throwing Damn. that thick butter. Yeah, yeah, she be throwing that, baby. She got that business and, and quick, it, baby. That, that business quick. And that ain't no, and that ain't no country crock either. She be greased up. Uh, uh, yeah. like, she look like if you grab her, she'll slip out your hand. <laughs> oh, you can't even get a hug on her. You no, can't even geez. lock a hug on. her. I don't know what kind of cocoa butter they use on Lizzo, but I be like, her ass is shiny, <laughs> and she be throwing that flat at you. Ass. <laughs> She's beautiful, but oh, I love me some Lizzo. That's hilarious. Um, so why did you say you think comedy and uh, strippers go together? Because it's like putting yourself out there. There's something about it. Like it's di- you're like putting whatever you have inside oh, of you, you out there. Both to- of us naked. Because once you get on stage, the yeah. stripper is naked. As a comedian, you really don't know if they're gonna last. So you're naked too. Yeah. Until you grab control. Until you learn how to slide down that pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I would agree with you a little bit. A little but bit. But I don't go. I don't go to strip club. I don't. I don't want to smell that shit in the air. Yeah. That's, I guess that's true. I never really, I guess, well, I remember the first time I ever went, me and my friend Lance were in uh, Louisville, and I was too young to get in, but he could get in. So he'd go in and tell me what it looked like, and he'd come back out and tell me and, you know, show me the shape of the breast with his hands and everything like that, you know? Uh, he'd come in and show you. Oh, was you 10? <laughs> no, I was probably 16, but we tried and they wouldn't let me in. So he just, just be describing everything to me. And I was sitting in the did car. You, did you get off with that? Have me a couple beers. I don't remember if I did. I probably did. Is 16 having a couple beers? I mean, I you know, I was just in, because I, I had to stay in the vehicle, you know. So he went inside and he would come back out and uh, just I'm chill. sorry, you drinking beers at 16? Yeah. Where you, where you from? I'm from Louisiana. Oh, no wonder. Y'all so, do. You probably were biting gay, putting hickeys on alligator necks at 16. Oh, we did some. They definitely had a lot of, I'm trying to think we had a lot of, we had a lot of different animals in our area. Because I grew up in an area that nobody had pets. People just had animals, you know? Like you would just see an animal in your neighborhood, you know? Like a cat or you would see somebody or just a dog would be there, you know? I didn't grow up in an area with a lot of like. Well, they uh, gave a fuck about the animal. 
Oh, dude, I remember the first time I ever saw a dog in somebody's house, bro, and they loved it. That shit blew my mind, man. <laughs> he said they loved it. Well, it when blew I blew my mind. When I was coming up, you didn't dogs wasn't in the house. You could tie them up to a tree. Yeah. And I, I think I did that bit on my special. I was like, yeah, you, you do did. that shit now, you going to fucking jail. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tie the dogs up to the trees anymore. Uh -huh. I mean, dog house dog houses are obsolete. You can't fucking use them. Yeah. They literally got to be treated like you. And I was like, fuck you. You can't. You don't even work. Yeah. So why am I treating you like me? Yeah, at least the dogs in Alaska and stuff, they're doing sled and they're doing work during the day. But yeah, these just a lot of local animals, bro. They really just, a lot of them don't pull their weight, you know? <laughs> don't pull their weight. <laughs> I don't they, think. Well, they, you say they didn't have a home, so they just hanging out on the corner like the drunk. <laughs> yeah, but that's more normal. <laughs> but once people got them inside, I, yeah, it definitely got a little bit weird. Keeps, baby. You got to keep it. You want it, you got to keep it. Some people, a man can't grow a mustache, can't grow a full hair. Well, you can't lose it. You got to hold on to what you got. Remember that song, hold on to what you got. I've never heard that song. But keeps, they'll help you. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. So keep what you have. Keeps offers convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. So you're going to have your meds. It's coming. It's discreet. Your neighbors are not going to know. Oh, gosh. Oh, Harold's going bald. It's 24-7 care and support. Keeps has a network of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to support you in making your hair goals reality. Treatment started just $10 per month. And Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. I take the medications. I stay on them. You stay on them, too, if you want to keep it. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash T-H-E-O to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Theo to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Theo. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Think about that. Is there something interfering with your happiness? Can you manage it yourself? If you can't, well, BetterHelp is available. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. They want you to start living a happier life today. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. That's priceless. That immediate contact. Yep. Visit BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. That's Better H-E-L-P. And join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for this past weekend listeners. Yep, that's you guys. If you're struggling, I've been there. I've used BetterHelp. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash T-H-E-O. Oh, thank you. That's my gay daughter. She let me give her a gay shout out. Oh, yeah, she is. And she's very beautiful. We'll have to put her picture on her Instagram up. Yeah, please do that. Okay, oh. dang, there you go. <laughs> and so does she let you pick out any of the ladies she likes or mother doesn't matter? Uh, she be picking out them, them rough bitches. She does? Yeah. I mean, them gang, but she like, so like what do you mean, uh, like the W and like the centers? <laughs> No, nah, she just. Or she I don't rolling know. with them shooting guards. Uh, them shooting guards. No, nah, they be big bitches. They, oh they, wow. They be. I don't know. She. We we have a running joke with her. She don't keep them long. Yeah. Yeah. They got to make it to three Thanksgiving before they really be a part of the family. That makes sense, kind of. I they think never that's realistic. Do. do um, do a lot of uh, is it do people keep being gay a secret more in black culture than they do? You think and. I mean, I only know really white culture. You know, I was around black culture a lot growing up, but I wasn't black, so I could just guess. You know, um, but if you black, if you around black culture, you 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 know black culture. 
I, I I didn't grow around white people, but I moved around them. And I li- I realized they love leaving shit at your door. They bake for you. <laughs> uh, what was your question? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like prison a little bit. They didn't bring you a baked good, you they know? They always bring a fucking baked good. I mean, when I live in and I'm like, God damn, white people, stop bringing shit to the door. We ain't even eating this shit. <laughs> but my neighbors were great in Plainfield, Indiana. What was your question? Um, do is it more? Okay, yeah, yeah. Is it's it being more, more secret. secret? It was when I was coming up. They used to call them punks when I was coming up. Uh, you don't give a fuck what you say, do you? I don't know. <laughs> That's what they called them when I was coming up. But like when my daughter came out, and I'm fifty, so I would use the word bull diger, and she was like, "Mama, you can't say the word <laughs> bull diger." And I'm like, "Why?" She said, "Cause nobody says that anymore, and it's just like a white person call you an N-word." And I was like, "When the fuck did they change it to that?" <laughs> so <laughs> on my sitcom, we did a whole episode about using derogatory words, and you can't say stuff like they're, they're called lesbians, uh-huh. a stud. So you can't say bull diggers and the punks, and you can't call yeah, people you that can't stuff. Say it you no lose more. your fucking, you you lose everything. Or you'll gain a lot of people that talk that just believe in just saying whatever they want. That's what I think about you. I think I'm a fan because she says what she wants to say. She, I get the real her. Well, I do, I do, but I'm not. If if I find out something hurt you, right, I'm not gonna see it. Like I tell you, when I moved to Indiana, to be honest with you, I had never heard of the word cunt, mm-hmm. and. I was at a comedy club and this black, this comedian called this white lady a cunt and she just boo hoo and I was like, what the fuck is a cunt and why is she crying like that? And she and one of the comedians like that is like a black man called you a bitch. I was like, hold on, white girl, stop crying. Let's whoop this motherfucker ass. <laughs> but I didn't know that. So if I know that you, if I know something is gonna hurt you, I won't say it to you know oh, to hurt yeah. your feelings stuff. So I'm not gonna say the f word. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to call a lesbian a bulldogger because that is derogatory. But, you know, if I'm at the house, my daughter might get everything. Yeah. And that's not. okay. That's well, different. Yeah, that's different. That's different. Yeah, I think people don't delineate kind of what is different or what isn't different, you know? Yeah, you don't want to do anything, you know, to hurt anybody. No, I but <clears throat> words have changed. You, you know, I think, I think this generation of people is a lot softer. You yeah. know, they can't take the shit we used to take. You know, they, they out... You know, when we got bullet, we just fucking got bullet and fucking dealt with it and showed the bullet 20 years later when they fat and I had all the kids, you ain't shit. Yeah. These kids here immediately, you know, can't take criticism and stuff like that. They, you know, they want to jump off a fucking bridge. I know. You know, it's like, it's, it's times have changed so much where back in the day when you were work, I don't know if it was hidden from us or we just, you know, we just see it more now. Like crybabies. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because before, if somebody took their life or something, or we didn't really hear about it. We didn't it. know, and now it's like boom in your face. You know, this person, like, why? You yeah. know, life is beautiful, but then mental illness was not a, for, a, a forefront like it is today. Mental illness used to be hilarious, man. You see somebody that's mentally ill, you're like, fuck, dog. They yeah, were, they really. It was your uncles, up. and you know, you wanted yeah, to hear them every talk. Every uncle. And, uh, every if, uncle was mentally ill. Not every, but you but had, a everybody lot of them, man, sixty percent, seventy percent. Yeah, we had a few that was, you know, but now you can't pick at that stuff anymore. Yeah, you got to say what the hell oh, is yeah. wrong. Oh yeah, Rodney's with this not doing well. You got to yeah. say stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So times just have changed, and you know, we we have to put a we we. I think the world has have held us to caring a little bit more. Or caring about each other, you think? Oh, we should, but yeah, it's trying yeah. to get there. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think it is trying to get there. Do you think, uh, oh, what was Halloween like in a black community? What was that? I always wonder what that's like. <laughs> it's like, uh, I've heard comedian makes jokes about, you go to the white neighborhood to get the big Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was like, you just, like every other Halloween. I don't think, um, I know in my community, they didn't go out on costumes like they do today. And I think it had a lot to do with people couldn't afford them or they really wasn't into them. Yeah. And like my mother-in-law, she didn't believe in Halloween because she thought it was the devil's day. Damn, yeah. Because she yeah. was super Christian and shit. So you wasn't, they wasn't allowed to go trick-or-treating and put on costumes and shit like that. But we were just going out regular clothes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think uh, we used to get like, oh, my dad was real old. My dad was 70 when I was born. He was an old man. <clears throat> Your daddy was 70? Yeah, he was 70. He was born in 1910, right? So he was real old. So he... How uh, the hell did that happen? Your mom was selling pussy? No, she was just giving it out. 
And uh, but how was your mother? Thirty two. My mother was thirty two, and I was. Was your born. daddy rich? No. And Why that's the would... crazy part. Was they in Tennessee? No, they was in Louisiana. Are you serious? Yeah. Your mama fucked a ninety year old. I mean, a seventy. Seventy. Year old. Yeah, yeah, seventy. And he was a handsome guy. But how long was he around after you was born? Two weeks? 86. <laughs> your mama gave birth and your daddy died. God damn. <laughs> it felt like it, man. He was every time, every day I saw him, I'm like, damn, he's getting smaller and smaller. He's about to meet me in the middle. <laughs> That's what I felt like. Your daddy was 86? Yeah, he and was old. How old was you when he died? 16. So I was getting pretty old, but um, Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah, so it was. Why your I, mama say she? Did, I'm interested. Why your mama would fuck somebody that I don't old? Know. Did she need a? Did she need her fucking trailer paid for? Some I don't shit? know what she needed. I, I, my Have mother doesn't act? say anything about it. Yes, she doesn't say anything about it. Is you the only? <clears throat> well, of course you the only. No, we got child four children. Him. I got two young. Not sisters. by that old man. Yeah. Not by that old man. Yes, you might need to check your DNA. I guarantee you that was a younger nigga up the street, a younger person up the street, baby. And your mom, she just put it on that old man because he was taking care of the household. Maybe. I don't He wasn't taking care of much, man. Dude, the best things I'm trying to think. Uh, my dad bought a cutlass, right? Because we lived right, we lived in like in a black and white neighborhood. So my dad bought a cutlass from a couple brothers around the corner from us and it had like 22s in the trunk, right? So he, and he was, he couldn't even hear, right? So he would drive around listening to Paul Harvey. You remember that guy on the radio who did like the weather report? It's like Paul Harvey, like the old mm -mm. dude. He would listen to it, would just it would, had a ton of bass though. It'd be like the weather and like uh, it was like AM radio and shit. He would listen to Rush Limbaugh just boom, boom. Your daddy was a Rush Limbaugh person, yeah, but he would listen to it with like a ton of bass though. It's different when you hear it with bass. Uh, I bet it is. You can't, he, he's screaming. He's screaming to a beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was a little bit different. That was interesting, I guess. Um, <laughs> I can't get over your daddy. Who was your granddad? <laughs> oh, my grandfather was born in 1880, which is crazy. Was That's it, wild. Did, him and your daddy went to school together. <laughs> was he alive when you when you when you were born? No, no, he was gone. Uh, that's the only reason why your daddy got your mama, because your dad, your granddad had already died. <laughs> Shit, I've heard fucking for rent money, but that's a little, that's fucking for social security. Yeah, that's a crazy part. I was like, who's fuck, why, I, I wouldn't, I just didn't Your understand. Your mama's still alive? Yeah, she's still alive. Don't tell me she got another old man. Oh, uh, no, she she married another guy, but he was only 20 years older, but he ended up passing away, but. Um, Everybody died with your mama too, though. Shoot. Your mama like, that's soft dick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She got like Saudi. How the fuck a, a seven she year old might. one man get? No, nah, yeah. I don't know. Do um, yeah, I guess maybe people's penises get softer over time. I don't know. I'm not sure. I just know how much. I mean, I know how you know my own penis over my own time, but I don't. Uh, how old are you, Theo? I'm 40 years old. I'm 41. Uh, it, it's coming. Damn. <laughs> I don't want that, man. <laughs> Nobody wants it, but it can't stay hard forever. Damn. I'm telling you, yo, if that's your daddy, your mama swallow. I don't, I don't mean to be mean, oh, but I just don't see no 70-year-old man back, back. what even no Viagra to help your daddy no. out back then. So you got it. So if they had no Viagra, he was doing that on sheer willpower, and there's something beautiful about that. You no, know. ain't no 70 year old man. You lying, Theo. That ain't your I'm not, daddy. I swear to God, it I'm is. I'm telling them brother sold your daddy that car. <laughs> might be your daddy. Because <laughs> you talk like a brother, too. You just got that Joe Dirt. I got haircut. a big ass, baby. I do have kind of a big ass. You know, I will say that. Uh, and black men ain't got no big ass. I'm just saying. You might need to check your DNA. You might be a little bit of black. <laughs> oh, dude, I'll take a little. Yeah. I spe yeah, I'll take a little if I could get it, you know? I wonder how you get that white kid that gets really obsessed with black culture, like you know. It's 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 foner. It's it's like it's the cool thing to do. And I felt like those kids. I you know I just like we rode on the same bus. It's, it's funny because you say your daddy listened to Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, but that was him. He that's because I think that was just another senior citizen, you know. But he didn't try to spill that over into your life. No, he wasn't. No, no, my dad wasn't racist. I think he was just a Republican, but he wasn't ra he wasn't like a racist guy. Our family wasn't like our, our family wasn't like redneck or anything. My dad was from Nicaragua and my mom was from Illinois. 
But well, how the fuck you end up with this redneck haircut? It only look good on you. Because you've been rocking that shit you, for a baby. long time. Yeah, I like that. You See, remind, you coming around now. No, you remind you, me of vanilla ice. You coming around. <laughs> ice, ice, baby. <laughs> I used to love that fucking song. It was good, huh? Well, I heard you talking about you used to watch Leave It to Beaver. I, I grew up watching, yeah, I used to like live through the television shows. Yeah. So how do you think if you grew up like in such an environment that was probably so dangerous, what do you really think? I know you talked about that teacher. It wasn't dangerous, it was poor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I mean, because you got to think, um, if you know black culture, back in those days, we wasn't, all of this black on black violence wasn't happening. That didn't happen to crack hit the black community. Yeah. Then that shit happened. So when I was growing up, That's it was crazy, just, it, it was just uh, poverty. You know, it was just poverty. That's what it was. It was, you know, and when you when you poor like that as a kid, you really don't know you poor until you grow up and then look and society tell you. Because a lot of shit, I didn't really learn that was wrong until I became, until I opened my mouth about it and I became a comedian. And mm -hmm. I was like, people were like, I didn't grow up like that. And I was like, you didn't grow up like that? Your mama didn't cook in the fireplace? What the fuck are your mama doing cooking in the fireplace? Because we had no gas, nigga. <laughs> you saw? <laughs> so, you know, it was just poverty. We were just poor as hell. Yeah. Being poor creates the most fun, though, because you got to be around each other more. You don't have things that occupy your time. I think you see more shit. You because, do see more shit. You learn it's you learn it's something called survivor. Yeah. Less stuff is hidden from you. So I think when you're wealthy, you get to hide more. You hide from other people. You can hide more from you get hedges, you get a yard, you get distance between you get separate bedrooms, you get all these things where like everything is well, kind of hidden. Where well, I we feel had, like when we you had don't hedges, have it. they were just walked on. We had a yard, it would just walk down. <laughs> Wait a minute, Theo. We I had everything rich people had. Yeah. It just didn't look the, as good as they shit did. Yeah. Uh, and we just cooked in a fireplace. But yeah, I think when you when you wealthy, um, you know, a lot more is given. You know, in a, and when you poor, you gotta earn a lot more. Yeah. Even with my kids, I mean, I'm not rich or no shit like that, but you know. But y'all getting fancier? Is it harder to put not pat? Is it harder to make your kids have the same struggle that you had? Is that tough? Well, they don't have the same struggle because their struggle ain't there no more. So, uh, it's it, I have to learn to say no. I was like, go get your own shit. Don't tell me what you can't do when your mama's sitting here with an eighth grade education and a GED and look what the fuck I did. Now, what the fuck you gonna do? Yeah. So, and I I don't have a problem with telling them no. Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck on. Get my money. I know <laughs> I'm not gonna do that for you. I'm gonna show you how to do it for yourself. Which one? And how many children do you have of your own? I have four, 35, 34, 22, and 23. And which one was probably the, was it to giving birth? Do you, tell me about that. Do you ever have any crazy giving birth days, like days where you had to go to the hospital and give birth? Because I know you had a wild, you had like a wild, you've had a wild life, you know, very wild compared to a lot of folks. Well, I, the, uh, my first one I had at 14, that was real easy. Damn. She popped out. We I went, can't even I was, think about that. It feels illegal for me to even think about that birthday. <laughs> Damn, bro. I can't even look at pictures from that. That's crazy. I know, right? But I gave birth at 14, and that was the easiest pregnancy ever. I mean, she literally popped out, and I was riding my bicycles in three days. Wow. So, um, you How know, big was she, you think? She was nine pounds, and my last Damn, child was 10, too. He really hurt. And he always been like that, kind of a pain a little? Well, you know, I, a lot of parents don't tell you this, but I, I always tell them, I say that I love all of my kids, but every parent got a favorite kid. And mm. that last one is my favorite. Yeah? And you tell it. Oh, yeah, I tell them. I say, I love all y'all, but this one ain't my favorite right here. <laughs> what I, makes him a favorite? I think because he was the last one. He was 10 too, and um, that my husband didn't have any kids when I met him, so he took care of my, my two kids and my sister four kids, and then I had a daughter by him. And then when I had my last one was a boy, and I wanted to name it after him. And I kind of think that's why Junebug is my favorite, because he's a junior. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had a Junebug bus growing up. We had a kid named Junebug. Junebug was everywhere. Everybody got a Junebug. Oh, really? I think so. Yeah. I'm trying to think. We used to have, I was always envious. Black people had the cool, exciting names. But I had Theo, and I got to meet Malcolm Jamal Warner one time, and I told him uh, that my name was Theo. He didn't really care, but that's all right. <laughs> 
That's all right. Saying, I told my name was Theo. He like, he ain't really care. He like, why should he care? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck you want me to do? Because you, hey, that anybody can be named Theo. Yeah. I probably gave you that same reaction. Well, what the fuck you want me to say? Yeah. <laughs> he, oh, we ain't got saying daddy. Your daddy 99. <laughs> well, I'll say this. Business is off to a good start this year. You know we're doing business. And you know who else's business did well last year? Santa. That's right. And when he can't bring all the gifts, he ships them. He uses ShipStation. Online shipping isn't slowing down anytime soon. Brook and mortal stores are disappearing. Everybody in the mail. Everybody. Is your business ready to keep up the pace? That's a great question to ask yourself. If you don't have a business, ask yourself anyway, man. Who cares? ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 e-commerce sellers. Those are businesses. You can keep track of orders from any sales channel, find the best shipping carrier with deeply discounted rates, and automate just about any shipping task with just a few clicks. Save time by funneling all your orders into one simple interface no matter what you're selling. Whether it's through Amazon, Etsy, or your own website, ShipStation makes it easy. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use my offer code T-H-E-O to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months of no-hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in T-H-E-O. ShipStation, make ship happen. It's the beginning of a new year. That's right. It is the beginning of a new year, so there's never been a better time to get back in shape. Have you thought about that? That's right. And you can start the year off with a 25% off a FitBod membership. Yep, it's, you know, springtime is when you want to get ready for summer. Summer's coming. So if you put yourself on a, you know, a six, eight-week plan, you can be ready to have a little bit more body comfort in the summer. Some of my fitness goals this year, to get my shoulders back and to do yoga and also do push-ups. And I've been doing them. And you know who can help you do them? FitBod. That's right. FitBod's algorithm uses data to create and adjust a dynamic fitness plan just for you. You'll have access to your own personalized routine on their easy-to-use mobile app so you can start making progress on your goals anytime, anywhere. Now, that's one thing that I do think is pretty fascinating about FitBod is the way they're able to cur curtail it to you. A lot of uh, different programs can't do that. Kick the new year off right and get started on your customized fitness plan from FitBod. Whether you exercise three days a week or twice a day, every workout is scientifically proven to be better than the last. Get 25% off your membership now when you sign up at fitbod.me slash T-H-E-O. That's 25% off your membership at fitbod, F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash Theo. You got any kids? No, I would like to get one. I've been, I get, I'm ready, I think, to get married, I think. I'm t talking about having a, getting a wife. You, you talking about getting the white? Are you dating, Theo? I'm doing a little bit of light dating, but I'm ready to really, I think, step it up. Really? I think so. I'm ready. I'm ready to have a couple children, maybe. Now you, um, you dating more than one woman? Are you dating one woman? I'm dating a little bit of more than one, you know. Uh, you just going to say that on your podcast, like these hoes don't listen to your podcast, okay? <laughs> I, know, I, know. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, I date, I'm still looking, you know. I'm still looking. How'd you preference? know when you met your husband that he was the one? Uh, he had a good job, back teeth, and he didn't hit bitches in the eye on Friday. Damn. But um, I knew he was the one. He was really? a nice guy. Did you know him right from the beginning, or it took a little few dates? I liked him, so uh, you know, he just came over and we went out a couple of times. But I, I liked him when I first saw him. What can a man do? You think if, he, if out of the gate he's kind of like in that gray zone, what can he do on that second, third date to maybe get himself into a better zone? You think? What do you mean by gray zone? Like if you're not liking him? You're just not sure, maybe. You're kind of like, yeah. Well, you're never not sure when you meet somebody. I think the more, the conversation. A, a person can learn a lot about you through your conversation. I mean, if, you, I mean, if you're listening good, some women get swindled through conversations because <laughs> they, some men know how to say all the right shit. Oh, yeah. Or when you hang up their phone, you got to take a step back like, oh, what this motherfucker up to? Yeah. You know, and then, I mean, 
times have changed so much now. Motherfucker give you their name. You can you can call a girlfriend like my friend Quisha. Bitch, put this motherfucker name in this thing <laughs> and tell me more about this person. And yeah. It'll break up everything about them. Yeah, it's hard to hide now. Yeah, it's hard to hide now. So, I mean, you just can't you can't be goo goo guy guy over somebody the first sometime the first fucking year. You just gotta keep talking and and see if it grows. Yeah. Do you think uh, sometimes I feel like black people don't get that nervous? I always feel like black people don't get nervous. Do you feel like black people get nervous or not? We human. What the fuck you think we are animals? No, I don't think that people? at all. I feel like black people don't <laughs> get nervous. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, a lot of my black like, friends they never seem like they get nervous. Nervous about what? Do you don't Anything. get nervous? I get nervous. I get nervous a lot. Do you? So I'm also a person that gets extra nervous. So then I think I'm more prone to maybe thinking that some people don't get nervous. Uh, you probably think, I would, I think, I think you, it's not the word nervous. You probably think we, is he thinking we badass? Are we just like, we don't give a fuck? I don't know what it is. Maybe we don't get scared. Maybe it's a mix of some of those things. And so then it comes off to me like that. Oh, my black friends don't get nervous. We get nervous. Let us get pulled over by the police. <laughs> you got that right? We get nervous. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a good point. Man. I mean, that's a real game. Well, yeah, once that shit happens, man, that shit is. But you know, you. <laughs> no whammies. No what? No whammies, I was saying. It's like a game show. That shit is a dangerous game show if you get pulled over by the cops, man. But not for all cops, because I'm not the one to say all cops are bad cops. You know, I try to tell people all the time you can't throw. That one, let that one person throw that whole race of people off. I know. But that's not fair. Yeah, because there's a lot of good guys, and then people come at them with a the bad energy and it's shit. It's like when um the guy from, uh he might be your friend, but um from um who was on the XM radio. What's his name? Oh, uh, mm. he was on XM radio. They was on for years, and Patrice. Nielsen. Opie and Anthony? Yeah, wasn't it Opie or Anthony that cussed out the black woman? I'm not sure Remember which one. she made one. the video? One of them made the video. That I probably, it might be Anthony. Anthony's more vo like volatile. Yeah, guy. so he made the video saying uh, black women or something. And all he had to say was that bitch he had that incident with, with mm. was the problem. But when you throw a whole, when you throw all black women in it, then it becomes a problem. Because I'm not that lady who cuss you out. Right. So why are you throwing my race because you dealt with somebody that we are the same race? That's yeah. not fair. If 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 a white boy run up and uh, rape me, I'm not gonna say all white boys rape. Yeah, that's not fair. I mean, cause you wouldn't rape me, would you? Um, I wouldn't. Why you say um first? <laughs> I just say I would. <laughs> that ain't how you answer a rape question. I mean, I wanted to really, I, I, you know. <laughs> you had to think twice. No, ma'am, I would not be raping. I ain't doing no raping. Okay, so. I'm not even that good at sex. I'd be the worst rapist ever. <laughs> I mean, that Well, absolute most of worst. them are worse at sex. That's why they take it. <laughs> and they force their shit on you. But, so I just think, I just think you cannot throw stuff on people because one person, individuals did it. Yeah. It doesn't make Everybody that race the same way. How long were you doing comedy before you re before something started to turn and you're like, oh wow, this is gonna be good? Because I've seen you go through the clubs for a long time. Oh you know? yeah, um, um, probably 12, 13 years, maybe fifteen at the most. And what was the thing that started to kind of? When did you start to see? Oh, something's changing here. I um I moved to Indiana, which I thought my life was gonna be fucking over, and so um. I ended up getting on a tour with Cat William, the Catapocalypse tour. Oh wow! And um, right, right, right after I moved there, I was, and Cat paid me fucking like a shit ton of money to do fifteen minutes a night. And then I ended up going on the road with Arnaz J and D Ray Davis, and I just kept grinding. But I knew, I knew by me being on that Cat tour, and, and you know I did festivals and shit like that, and that had really helped me out. Because Red Grant, was he on there too or no? Red that... Grant was on the one I was on. He's on all of them. But he was on that one I was on. But it, it, I just felt like that's when I thought, you know, a lot of shit started to kind of change for me. Yeah. And along with festivals, I stayed going to the festival even if I wasn't invited. Like Montreal. Because, you know, as a young comic, you automatically think, oh, if I go to Montreal, if I just get new faces, oh, my whole yeah. life going to change. Change, yeah. That is, that that is, is bullshit. A, that is a, I try to tell you. I said, hey, just go over there and do the fucking jokes. It's a goddamn... It's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time. I remember the year I went, 
And it was the year of the white boys. So white boys was really hot. But oh, I didn't damn. realize that until after I was there. And it was after this, everybody was all up this Canadian comedian ass, which I didn't think was funny, but I didn't know. I, I'm a young comic, so I don't know what the industry is looking for. Right. And I did my set and nobody said anything to me. Oh. But when they tell you, oh my God, the industry is going to be all over you. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Nobody talked to me. And I remember going back to my hotel room and crying because Everybody told me if oh, I go man. over there, I was going to blow the fuck up. Then I had to realize this shit is a process. And it might take, it might not never happen. Yeah. So I just started to focus on my comedy. And when I got invited to shit, I would show up and, and I just learned to take the feelings out of it. Because mm. when you got feelings out in it, you will fucking go crazy. That's a really good point. Yeah, I remember getting invited, not getting invited to those things and thinking, man, I'm never going to have a chance. This this industry doesn't like me. This whole world doesn't, you know, that I'm not a part of it. Was you a new face? No. Really? I never was, yeah. And then it started to get, you know, now it's really, di it's about like diversity and a lot of like trans comedian, gay, com you know, it's a lot of that now. And I don't need it now, I've, you know, I've in my own kind of world now. Once podcasting started, people could create their own worlds. Yeah, they could. They really could. Um, I just think it's more about diversity. It's a, it's a lot about diversity. I think the, the 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 industry was forced to listen to what everybody had to say. Yeah, well, you need Where, more voices. At a certain point, you kind of have heard a lot of the same voices. Yeah, because, I mean, let's be honest. If it's a white girl, it's the same slutty white girl yeah. thing. And then I've seen so many other white comedian, white female comedian that wasn't slutty, but wasn't getting pushed to the top. Right. And I'm like, well, this bitch is funny. Right. But they doesn't get, you know, when you when you slutty, it was like they they'll push you to the top. And everybody knows that knew that at the time. So I just think it's it's what the industry believe that the voice that they're looking for that season. Mm. Well, so I've always thought Earthquake. I've always thought is one of the best comedians. Oh, man. he's Nobody, so fucking funny. I mean, who kills a room? Who kills a room? I've always said Earthquake is probably one of the top three that I've seen who kills a room, and to finally see him getting, you know, getting a Netflix special and just Do you have one things that make yeah. him feel deserved, you know, because a part of it is making him feel does like you deserve that, you know, not you does, but just like a thing where it's like. You've earned this. Yes, you know? yes, yes. A piece of him can be like, okay, I have, you know. I mean, because we, we as comics, let's be real. We sit at the house and we're like, how this motherfucker oh, get yeah. this? This motherfucker ain't even funny. You said behind the door. Who the fuck pushing this person? <laughs> yeah. So that's what I mean when I say I learned to take the feelings out of it. So now I say, oh, well, you know, um, maybe more black girls will get specials. Right. I was so happy when they gave Tiffany that special. And um and Monique made all of that noise about um you know the pay of women and stuff, yeah. and you know I was happy because uh, I'm gonna be honest I think Netflix started to give more black women stuff after that right you know where I didn't see a lot of black females getting special especially ones that stepped outside of the box. So when she, that's a good point, huh? Yeah, I never but, even thought about that. Yeah, and then you know, I don't know what Tiffany got paid, but I heard she got paid really good. I mean, they was really good to me too. So you know, I just think it made them pay attention. Hey, you, it's not enough diversity on your platform, which they they turned it around and they put a lot of diversity on it. You know, I like when I see a gay or a trans or a black or a white or Hispanic or. Uh, or any uh, Asian comedian. Yeah. Because that means it's a little bit, some, it's something out there for everybody. It's like a gumbo. Yeah. Instead of just one straight way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I used to think about that when I was young. It would be like, <clears throat> actually, a lot of my favorite shows, it was like, I mean, what did they have? Like, I mean, I loved, uh, a lot of my favorite sitcoms and stuff were black shows, you know? Good Times, The Jeffersons. Yeah. What was, uh, Family Matters. People love that show. Yeah, people love that show. My show is um, I, the show that I do, the Miss Pat show. It's it's kind of like they want to say a Roseanne because I'm 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 a I'm a plus size woman like Roseanne, but I think it's more like Archie Bunker, mm -hmm. like just yeah yeah that type of honesty, and and all I have, in the family that one. Yeah, all in the family. I have a lot of learning moments like him. Yeah. So um. 
but it, but it, sometimes sometimes I'm shooting. I tell my son, I tell my co-creator Jordan Cooper. I said sometimes it feel like Martin's. Then it feel like a Burning Mac. So it's a little bit of mix of everything. Well, you look like Gina from Martin a little bit. The lady that played in that show. Really, I've never heard that one. <laughs> really, Mike, my, my the father on the show wife looks a lot like her to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a couple questions that came in. Do you want to pull something up, Colin? Okay. Hey, what's up, Miss Pat? What's up, Theo? Um, my question is for Miss Pat. Uh, I was a photographer at Skankfest last November, and Miss Pat was there, and, and so was so was the great Bob Saget. And um, you know, Miss Pat and, and Bob talked a lot about their friendship and their relationship, you know, on podcasts during the week and stuff. And but I was just wondering, is there a favorite moment you have, Miss Pat? Uh, you know, or a favorite uh, story about Bob that you have? We'd love to hear it. Thanks, guys. Gang, gang. Gang, baby. Thanks for the question, man. Um. Yeah. Bob Saget came to my house for dinner. Did he really? I did Bob Saget um, podcast. And when we when we logged off and, you know, I found out. I said, you playing in Indy. I live here. He's like, why don't I come to your house for dinner? And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? You know, I'm like, you want to come to my motherfucking house for dinner? And so he really threw me off. And I'm like, okay. And so I didn't really know if he was going to come. Wow. So, and at the time, I'm in Atlanta trying to buy a house and get our stuff together. I had a gig, and I had to get rid of that date that Bob said that Thursday because I was not going to tell Bob said he could not come to my fucking house. So I just, Damn. I went home and I cleaned up. I called the housekeeper. And my husband's like, what the fuck is going on? I said, I have a really famous person coming to the house, but I can't tell y'all who it is because I didn't know if Bob Sagan was going to show the fuck up like oh, he did. You yeah. know how famous people stand you up. Oh, yeah. And then they was like, well, who's coming? And I would never tell them who came. <laughs> and I just say, wait till they ring the doorbell. And everybody trying to figure out, fuck it, who coming? He rings the doorbell. He got flowers in his hand and wine. They, they was like, Bob Saget? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And we sat there, and I wish I'd have videoed the whole thing. When I tell you he was so fucking funny. And, you know, you thinking Bob Saget, you know, the clean Bob Saget from yeah. the sitcom, corny as fuck. You yeah. know, you know. But yeah. I've seen his stand-up. I knew his stand-up was funny. I just didn't, the, he was so fucking quick with it. Oh. He was like just cracking the fuck. He had us cracking up, like seriously. And then we, my son barbecued, because my son Juma can barbecue really well. So I was like, Juma, you going to barbecue and Gary Allen's going to make it. They was like, who the fuck are? Shut the fuck up. I said, just cook the food. And I can't cook. So we made this barbecue and I bought steaks and you know i'm like i don't know what the fuck you know rich people eat yeah. you know or how they eat so i just went out and bought the best of everything and um bob second ate a plate he's like oh my god this shit is so fucking good he got up and went and fixed himself another plate damn sat down and then he did i was like hold on bob you went to buy grocery motherfucker <laughs> you know, I three plates. he's like he's been a long time since i had food this good miss bell like what the fuck wow. have you been and he was there for about four or five hours, and we laughed at that table, and we talked, and, and that's my that's my most memorable moment with him. Wow, that's wild. That's amazing, huh? Yeah. And your family, your kids were there too. My uh, my whole family was there. It wow. Sure was. I flew. I flew. Uh, my the girl who do my hair, in, and I was like, he might not come because I told her who he was, mm -hmm. but I didn't tell my family. And we just waited. And he rung that door, but he got in an Uber. Damn. They got out the fucking Uber. Like a nice Uber or a regular one? It was a regular little Uber. I don't even think the person who picked Bob Saget up knew they were Bob Saget because he had a mask on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. And, and and so we take the pictures and I post them and everybody's like, Bob Saget was in our neighborhood? <laughs> oh, that's my most memorable moment. I tell you, when um I found out he passed... I couldn't stop crying. Yeah. Because it was such a building relation. Like, Bob Saget would literally text me in the middle of the night, how you doing, Pat? And I had just talked to him because, you know, I had asked Bob to be on my show. And I was my show was on BET Plus and Paramount Plus. And, you know, I know Bob ain't never been on BET. So I said, I'm going to ask him. And I said, would you come and play, you know, a role on the show? He's like, fuck yeah, I'm there. So we were literally talking about him, you know, doing a role on the show. Yeah. And, um... Um, the week the week he died, I had just texted him and say send it up. He's telling me who to reach out to, and I got you, Pat. I'm gonna do it. And I was leaving a Falcon game, and my son called and said, "They said Bob Saget died." And I, I called, and it was no answer. And I was like, "This can't be real." And I lit I, I I literally fucking cried. I was like, 
Cause I really liked it. He was so fucking genuine. Mm. He was just a genuine guy. And I'm I'm the type of person like I don't give a fuck who you are or what you've done. If you're a good person, mm -hmm. then I fuck with you. Yeah. And he was a good person. Wow. Man, that's what kind of makes me sad. Yeah, he was a good person. Damn. And sometimes I go back and I look at it. And, you know, I started seeing people posting their text message between uh, them and Bob Saget. I was like, I would never do that. Some of that's a little weird. You know, I think showing some support is one thing. Trying to relate too much. I don't. When people do that shit, they over relate. That shit to me is so. Well, that's is you want clout on the on, online too. When you want, I would never show something that private because you died. And to go and show people my text message between me and Bob say, I just I wouldn't do that. Yeah. You know. And then, it, like I had an actress on the show that committed suicide who played the secretary. Oh. And I had just talked to her a week before, and she was about to return to the show. And that shit just hit me like a brick because she was she was like my baby. You know, I, I don't know. I When I meet people, it's because I grew up like not, not, not a close-knit family, and I just started to collect people as family members. Mm -hmm. And she was like a family member to me. Mm. And, you know... But it was about three weeks ago. She was here. She was missing, and then she, um, she they found her. Um, they said she committed suicide. So, did you have any inkling when you saw her? Did she seem down? Or you couldn't. You'd have no idea. I don't. You know, you don't really. She was. I had a nervous energy to me, like, uh, like always something wrong. But she didn't want to disappoint people. And I was talking to her about a role, and I was like, "That role is too small. You're too fucking good." So look, I'm gonna bring you in for this role, and and we back and forth. And I come off stage, and I got this long ass text. So I said, like, "You?" I called. I said, "You okay?" And he's like, "I just don't want to disappoint you." And I was like, oh. "Lindsay, I fucking love you." And it, you know, no, no, you know. And I was like, "Just wait." And the week she killed herself was the week she was supposed to be on my fucking show. Damn. Well, she was. That was the episode she was gonna come in for, but I told her it was too small. I was gonna bring in for the next one. So we literally write her in the next one. And as I come off stage, they said she was missing. And I talked to another uh, one of the actors from L.A. on my show. And then they, what, two days later, they said she was dead. And I was like, I can't believe she did this. Damn. That's scary. Yeah, it's very scary. You know, because, I mean, as because... I, I, I sometimes I, I beat myself. I was like, "Fuck! If I had just given her that small role, mm. that's she could have been there with me, and she wouldn't have killed herself." Yeah, I have a guy. There's a guy like who used to hit me up. Uh, I met him through skydiving. Right, I met him at a comedy show one time, and he said, "Hey, man, I'm such a big fan. I can relate to you on certain levels, like how you feel about a lot of things." And we swapped numbers. He invited me to go skydiving, so I went down there one time. Took my little. I had a girlfriend at the time, and she was a good girl, and we went skydiving and. Then a couple like months after that, he'd been messaging me, but I hadn't. I just hadn't noticed. I'd just been busy, and I just hadn't noticed. And he'd sent like three texts over a couple months, and then he killed himself. And sometimes I think, damn man, if I just had my life had been a little slower, or something, you know, if I hadn't been thinking about myself, then I'm not saying I could have saved him, but maybe I could have just. Yeah. You just don't know sometimes how what people are needing, you know. I mean, some people some people just need somebody to listen sometime. And so, I have a uh, and and I I don't have a lot a lot of time like I used to cuz I'm so busy with mm -hmm. a TV show, radio, and just trying to create other shit where I try to take out the time like if I'm waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I don't really have to be up cuz my mind wake me up at that time. I stroll through my messages and I see a lot of people that need talking and if i can't say a lot i was like love you take care how you doing and i answer back right. i try to as much as i can but with a growing career i mean i don't i hope i get as big as dave Chappelle and kevin hart one day but i do take time to when they message me when i can to say something back yeah because sometimes people just need an ear yeah yeah, it's crazy how we have so much communication now, but nobody really taking time really to listen. Nobody's really available in a lot of ways. Or we all feel like we also need to tell somebody instead of hear them. You know, I noticed yeah. that a lot. We feel this compulsion, I think, since we have so many ways to put things out there that we have to put things out. We, I, have to, I have to tell them, you know, I have to, instead of like, uh, listen, I don't know. I don't know that much. Yeah. Um, Is there another question? Yeah, we got one more question that came in. Oh. I'm going to start this question shit. I did somebody else's podcast. It was kind of cute. 
Yeah, it's nice, and people can, you know, if they get specific, they can really have something for you. Got a question here from Miss Pat. If you had three options to marry one of these comedians and live with for the rest of your entire life, between your boy, Theo Vaughn, everyone's favorite fat alcoholic comedian, Burt Kreischer, <laughs> or the slept king himself, Bobby Lee. Who are you taking, Miss Pat? Yeah, Bobby Lee, could you handle that little Vietnamese treat, huh? that little egg roll? Could you handle that little shrimp salad, baby? Could you handle it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Could you handle that, huh? Uh, I'm going to have to choose. Um, now, you look good in that picture right there, Theo. <laughs> well, if you think you, I look good in that, yeah. then something you done changed you because something's wrong with you now. Well, I'm going to have to go with Burt Kreischer. Burt got that long paper. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good Burke point. Burt look like he can buy my wigs and y'all can. <laughs> <laughs> and we look like we're wearing wigs. That's the crazy part. <laughs> But what about Bobby? You ever date a little Asian man? I ain't never dated out my side my damn race. You I, there's definitely not no fucking Asian. Come on. I've seen Bobby Lee dick too. That nobody want that yeah. shit. That shit's so small like a toothpick. Yeah, that thing really don't even look like you can do nothing. He, he got baby nuts. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't busting no nuts. He peeing inside of you. <laughs> yeah. It looked like his dick crying a little. No, <laughs> be you know the uh, the Asian people. They say what those little wooden shoes to keep their feet from uh, growing. Uh -huh. Lucky like stuck his dick in one. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be Bird crashing for me, baby. Damn, Bert all right. Like I seen Bird house too, and Bert, Bert like them Southern girl because his wife from the same place I'm from, Atlanta. Is she really? Yes. Yeah, she's beautiful. <laughs> she's a sweetheart. But you do look like an actress, an actor in that picture, Theo. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think about sometimes doing some acting, but I don't know. Podcasting and touring kind of keeps me so busy, you know? Did you always want to be an actress? No. I uh, just, I love comedy. And, um, because acting's a different thing. It's a different beast. Um, you know, my show was created through Fox and, and Lee Daniel and Ron Howard and Brian Grazer. So, um, they wow. immediately got me an acting coach, and it took five years to get that show up. And on wow. TV, because Hulu shot the pilot, dropped it, and then BET Plus picked it up. And then Paramount, it just went over to Paramount Plus. So um, they just they put a lot of money into me learning how to act. Mm. So, But no, I, I, I prefer comedy first. Yeah. But I do I do like creating. Yeah. I do. I have some other things and that I'm working on. I, I, I like behind the camera. Yeah. It's a lot of fucking work in front of that camera. Especially yeah. when it's your show, because you got to memorize lines, you got to write jokes, you got to help write it. Then you know when they, when all the other actors go home, your ass still up. Yeah. And you st this is your show, so you got to still make it great. Like I literally got to leave here, and I'm running to do another show, and then on the plane I'm reading all night. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's more work than people think. Oh, it's a lot of fucking work. You gonna earn them pennies. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's get a different one. Do we have one more that came in? And then we'll get Yo, you. Yo, this here, past man. weekend, what's up? You know, I'm sitting here all horned up. Anyways, Miss <laughs> Pat, I got a question for you. So, you talk about how you used to sell crack cocaine and stuff. Everybody knows. Every neighborhood has that one funny crackhead. Who is the funniest person that you used to sell crack to? Gang, you guys have a good one. Gang, baby, I always wanted to smoke crack, man. Oh, no, you don't. But I think it was, it, I'm going to say two. If I can remember, uh, one of them name was Rehab. Mm -hmm. It was this dude, he said, you know, my, my street name was Rabbit. Rabbit, uh, give me one more rock. I'm going to the rehab. So I named him Rehab because he never made it. Mm -hmm. He ended up fucking shooting some dope and falling out in the street and die. Damn. He was so fucking funny. And Squirrel was the other one. He the only motherfucker that bought dope from you but were rap. Give me that sack, Pat. Give me that sack, rap. And he would have a whole rap every time he came and bought dope. He was saying you a whole song that was fucking hilarious. Uh, yeah. There's some funny ass crackers, some talented ass crackheads out there too. Yeah. Yeah, crack will bring the talent right out of you. It brings it right to the surface because you need it. So you'll give whatever you got, whatever your talent is, I feel like it'll you you'll display it. Uh is that no. true, you think? No, I think talent bring the best talent. I mean, the best talent crack bring out of you is dick sucking. Oh, damn. Because when you run out of money, you got to do something. Well, I guess you're right then, Theo. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true, huh? <laughs> I would never. How did, How far down a crack do you have to beat it Will you get to that? Were you doing oral sex out there for another uh, $2? Um, how, probably at the bottom. 
But how many times do you have to use crack before you start getting to that? Like, is there a couple of times? I don't you... know. I never use. They say crack is very addictive the very first time. They say it gives you a feeling that you'll never get again. Wow. And you're forever searching for that feeling. Damn. That's crazy that they can make that, huh? Uh, Yeah. That's crazy. It's like they're playing, like they're playing God or something. Yeah, this shit is wild out there. Yeah, I always wanted to smoke it, but I've always been afraid, I guess. Well, I'm glad you didn't because I would hate to see you say your mullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Pat, thank you for coming in. Thank you for finally fucking having me. I know we've been back and forth, back and forth, and I've been ripping and running, but I appreciate you taking no. taking out the time and doing it today. Well, I feel honored, and I'm so excited for your success. I'm just really, you know, I'm just happy for you. You sound like you have a beautiful voice, and... um I think we just need it in the world. So thank you for coming and spending some time with me. And if it don't work out on the white side, Theo, come on over here with these uh, Hook me beautiful up. Uh, cocoa butter rub down sisters. They'll take Would you. Would they give me a chance, you think? Uh, they're going to change that haircut, but they're going oh, <laughs> they to put some cornrows in that shit. Dude, roll it up. I'll put a jingle bell in that shit during the holidays, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. You was the smoothest talking white boy I've seen in my life, but dressed like a white boy. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. You know? I'm a, I'm I'm gonna hook you. I gotta, Quisha. We gotta find Theo Vaughn, a black sister. Do you, uh oh, oh she, she says got she it. got it. with or without kids, huh? I could do. I think maybe one kid, two kids seem like a lot. Two kids. What'd you say? What about six? No. She got six. <laughs> Is she really? <laughs> the lesbian have six? How? <laughs> no, the lesbian don't have any. Fun. Oh, your other. She the... eat her babies. Oh no. <laughs> 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 the other girl got six kids. Oh, damn. You have six children? God damn, baby. Wow. That thing hit like popcorn. <laughs> that thing must. You got to put the off switch on that bitch. You must, that thing must be stuck on. <laughs> they That's crazy, stuck on. <laughs> man. Wow. All right, y'all. We bringing, Theo, we bringing Theo Vaughn to the black side. I am looking for him a good black woman out there. And I'm going to say it on my podcast. And we're going to hook you up. We're going to take you on, send you on a black date. I'm ready. And I'm and I'll even take a real thug ass woman too. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready. I think you can have a thug bitch. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I want a bitch that'll fucking she's driving. She's you know driving. She picks me up. You know what I'm saying, bro? That's what <laughs> well, I'm talking we're gonna about. end this podcast right here. And in, in the black community, they call it a low down nigga. So <laughs> oh, we ain't even gonna do that to <laughs> you, deal. <laughs> Look, I don't know what I'm ready for something. Thank you, Miss Pat. I got you. I got you. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these. I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wild Shine that light Damn, they're gone, I guess.